of I completely sold my soul to corporations? Find out in this video. Yep, it's another product from a sponsor. Am I a sellout? Find out in this video. All right, YouTube. So you guys know I've been getting a lot of sponsors lately, even some video game companies. And some of you guys are calling me a sellout. Am I a sellout? I'm gonna address that and a whole lot more in this video. It's gonna be a little bit different from what you guys are normally used to because I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of different things that have been kind of piling up on my desk and my mind that I need to get off my chest. I want you guys to stay till the end. I want to tell you what I, the best thing I've done for my channel as far as comments. So I'm not going to be reading any of the mean comments, but I'm going to show you what you may or may want, may not want to consider if you want to throw a bunch of mud at my channel. And you can find out maybe the best way to try to get me, meaning troll me. See, I'm going to give away some tips on troll on how to troll me in the channel because how you're doing it now is actually not working. It's having zero effect. So I'm going to talk more about that later. For now, let's check out what I got. This is not a sponsor, but I got myself a Ruger. I got myself here. Let's uh, open this up. Click, 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 and click. This is out of pocket money I used because I wanted myself a gun. Now, you guys may be familiar with Ruger. This is a 22 uh, long rifle. Shoots little tiny bullets, so this is perfect for small game. I wanted this for uh, rabbits. I wanted this for maybe grouse, squirrel, perfect gun. So what I gotta do is, out of the box, I have to sight it in. So this is a cool box. We're gonna get into that box a little bit later from the sponsor. First, I want to set the target out. Oh, look, Norwood, another sponsor. Let's set this back out about 20 yards or so. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Here's my bullseye. I have a 20 gauge shotgun. Uh, kind of makes a mess of squirrels, gonna be honest with you. I need something smooth, a smaller bullet. Uh, this one has a scope. My other shotgun just kind of sprays everywhere, which is kind of good. But uh, this one here can do it a lot more accurately. So this box I'm pretty excited about. This is the sponsor that I actually went out and found myself. I've requested them. It's something I've wanted for a very long time. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. But first I wanna talk about my gun. So you guys have been talking, you've been asking me a lot about how to get started in hunting. This is a 22 long rifle Ruger. They're not sponsoring me. I had to pay out of pocket for this. So that's part of the reason why I have sponsors. Other sponsors, video game sponsors, is because I need to be able to pay for stuff like this. I told myself that as long as I was doing stuff in my backyard, that wasn't costing me a lot, and I wasn't having to travel, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell out. But I'm doing things that are making me travel almost around the world. I went down all the way down to South Texas. I went all the way up to Northwestern Ontario. I want to do more trips. I have a lot of things in mind that I want to do, and those all cost money. So this is a magazine. It carries a 22 long rifle bullet it's a very very small bullet you can see how big that is but it's got a long range you can shoot this up to a kilometer fairly accurately it's 10 in a magazine safety on safety off safety on okay so here and then you can leave the action open so leave the action open you pull out and there's a little button here at the bottom you flick and that'll hold the action open. Now it the gun can't shoot. Now, what's good about this gun is there's no kick. So you don't have to flinch when you shoot. Look through the scope. This gun this Ruger came with a scope. All said and done was, I think, 400 Canadian. So that probably is a lot of money to you guys, but it's a good place to start. This is the type of gun that will literally last you a lifetime and the next generation and a generation after that. These things are built to do work. Good for small game and squirrels. Do not use this for big game. Okay, so that's my Ruger. Uh, to sight it in, there's a dial at the top here. 
and then there's a dial on the side as well. Now it says up, you do a couple clicks. You do one click per inch at 100 yards. So do the math on that. Pace off 100 yards to move it one quarter inch left or right is one click. Pretty simple. Same on the other, except it's up and down. I've already played around with it a little bit. So let's go check out and see how I did. And obviously I need a lot of practice, but um, it's kind of a weird pattern, isn't it? A lot of you guys have asked, how do I get started? Well, I'm just getting started with the 22. I've never shot a 22. I've never owned a 22. I walked in the store and said, I want a 22. What do you recommend? And this is the gun he recommended. I paid for it, bought my bullets, and off I went. You may have to start off a little bit further off than that. You may need to get your, your, your gun license. You might have to go do a weekend course. And that I did when I was 16. So that is a pre pretty sweet gun to start off with. So as you guys know, I use and abuse my stuff. I showed off in my $500 camping, Walmart camping trip my pants these are my camel pants i have uh, barely any life left in them in fact i can just poke holes in them now there are holes all over the place in these pants i've been using these pants for about 15 10 15 years and i'm not making that up i actually still use these for when i do uh, construction work and uh, and maintenance around the house because what does it matter if i have a couple holes in them so i have used these to their fullest potential these are actually supposed to be camo. It's actually supposed to be camouflage. And I wore these last year for deer hunting deer in the warm season, uh, which is right now, we're just about to enter the early deer hunt. And I would wear these. I would just get busted all the time wearing this camo because it, it's not camouflage anymore. It's basically like wearing a white or a very shiny uh, piece of clothing. It reflects way too much light. You can see against the backdrop, it stands out like crazy. So what I did was I contacted a company. The company's called ASAT Camo. ASAT stands for All Season All Terrain. I've wanted this camouflage for a long time. They're not paying me to say anything good about the company. This is a company that I wanted to align with for a long time. What do I like about the camo? It's an open pattern. And I'm not selling the ASAT. You guys go buy whatever camouflage you want. Open pattern means it doesn't try to look like anything in particular. All right, guys, you can see this camouflage compared to that, <laughs> it's like night and day. They've got a whole line of bow hunting style, gun hunting style, all season, all terrain. You can see at a distance, this stuff really blends in. I'm gonna throw some of this stuff on right now and I wanna show you what it looks like. All right, now I, I know you guys can't see me right now, obviously, so just to let you know, I'm, I'm right here. All right, can you see the difference between the two? This is not meant to make you invisible to human eyes. It's meant to fool the eyes of your prey. I'm gonna back up a little bit. See, you can see me in my pant. No, never mind. This is a bad joke. Okay, at a distance, it breaks up the outline that is a human body. And the human body is what an animal sees. Now, it's not gonna hide you if you're walking around. Animals understand that humans are bipedal, so they know that they see somebody moving and the gate that they move in, the bipedal gate, they know it's a human predator. Here's a bow hunter jacket, comes with a hood, fleece line. I got bib, this is insulated because I hunt right into December. I need something that keeps me warm. Here's the warm, super duper warm pants, comes lined, very heavy material and a very heavy jacket to go along with it. So, did I sell it to ASAT? I don't know guys, you guys decide. I don't really care. I wanted ASAT camel and I got it. And I'm gonna use it. I realize you guys clicked on this video because you want to find out if I'm really selling out. Like, you know, if I've just lost my soul to corporations. But uh, first I want to take you up to my Native American garden and I want to talk to you on the way about what I've been up to lately. So uh, not too long ago, a buddy of mine and I went out goose hunting, paddled up the river. And this is kind of an urban Southern Ontario kind of deal. There's quite a bit of uh, people out, out and about and it's not really rural, not what I'm used to anyway. So we, we, we did paddle up the river and uh, we did some calling, trying to get a goose. I wanted to do catch and cook goose, um, but I had no idea how to goose hunt. I mean, I'm not that good at it. I've shot at geese before, I've never really managed to lay any down except for one that was on the bank. Uh, it was a video a couple years ago. Anyway, we set up, did some calls, and uh, none really came in, so that was kind of a bummer. 
but I didn't want to chuck the footage away. I wanted you guys to see that. Just because I don't end up with a video necessarily doesn't mean I'm out trying. And that's the thing. I'm not very successful all the time. In fact, there's several videos that never saw the light of day because I wasn't successful in doing them. So part of the reason why I'm doing this vlog style stuff in this one anyway is because I want to share those experiences with you and show some of the things that we go through that are end up being complete failures. But it doesn't mean we're not actually out there learning and trying and goose hunting is something I wanted to learn for a while. I'm on my brother's homestead right now. A back burner project for here has always been the the tiny house. And uh, it may end up turning into a prepper kind of bunker. We are talking today about how we wanted to get that done. And uh, there's not been too much movement on it. It's been way too hot. And we found working down there, there's way too many mosquitoes. It is something we're still going to do. And, uh, you know, we did use a sponsor for that with our, uh, our sawmill project. As always, we need tools to get things done. So we have Norwood saw for that. Do we sell our souls to corporate Norwood? Well, I guess it's up to you guys to decide. So here we are. Here is my Native American garden for this year. <laughs> it is basically a patchwork of weeds. It's a complete disaster. Even the sunflowers didn't do that well. And I filmed the video here, which you may or may not have seen. <clears throat> it was a chicken called a beggar's chicken. So anyway, we wrapped it in clay. So I dug a hole down here. And what I found is it's like cement. This soil is the absolute worst soil I've ever experienced in my entire life. So if you guys have any ideas on how to do a big garden in clay, let me know because it's been three years now and I have no clue how to do it. We've dumped miles and miles and miles of manure in here and it goes nowhere. It does nothing to amend the soil. So right where I'm standing here at a row of pumpkins, you can see the row of sunflowers is, or sunflowers, the only thing that actually took off down here was all pumpkins. You can see there's another bunch of corn over here. Uh, I might get a couple cobs off there. <clears throat> the corn over here did okay. It's very, very stunted. I'm gonna flip you around here. You can see very stunted. They're very small cobs, but there's probably something salvageable on there. And then back in there, a couple cobs. Down here is a very small cob. So this year is not a good year. Tons of weeds. Here's another one. So that's, that would say was probably one of my best cobs and it's not even full and plump. You got me playing War Robots again. All right guys, jokes aside, you want to know how to troll me? So I'm opening the box and you also want to know if I'm a sellout. So as far as being a sellout, you guys decide. I have a wife and a son and I'm accountable to them. If I go out and do trips, I need to be able to pay the bills. Um, I obviously don't live in the woods eating wild animals. I have a regular life. That might be surprising to some of you out there. Probably some other people out there have never had a job. And so you're just calling me a sellout. Or maybe you think I don't play online games. Maybe you think I don't use products when I go out in the wilderness. Uh, newsflash, guys. You're all going to sell out at some point sell out you're going to have a job and you're going to have bills to pay and you're going to have to do something that maybe um you don't want to do i'm aligning myself with companies that i feel um you guys would appreciate that probably some of you guys play games and some of you guys will use some of the products that are i'm using and that help me make my job and my life easier when i'm out in the wilderness so as you can see right here we have the inside mechanics of having a youtube channel if uh, you, you have a channel yourself, you can go in and look. I have uh, two, three tabs. There's published comments, help for review, and likely spam. Likely spam is easiest. Let's get rid of that right away. If you guys want me to see a comment, don't put links. Uh, don't cut and paste a bunch of text. Uh, don't try to direct people to other websites. That ends up in a likely spam. It does a pretty good job of that. But sometimes by accident, people try to you know, notify me of something that's interesting and ends up in the spam. Help for review. That's the one that we're getting at right now. If you guys want to troll me, you have to do it very politely. I have uh, an activated a filter. It has certain keywords in it. Bad words. Bad language. 
and that filters out the majority of all the negative, hurtful, destructive comments. And it's not like I don't want to read them. Like, I don't care. I've read everything. You can't get at me. I'm pretty much insulated now. I've heard every permutation of every way you can insult me possible. So it's not hurting my feelings. Thing is, I want the channel to be suitable for everybody. I want kids to be able to go in and actually enjoy the dialogue that might accompany or that does accompany our videos and our outings to better understand how it is that we can get our job done out in the wild, whether it be hunting, fishing, uh, camping, anything. So I don't want to have all those nasty words and nasty language for the benefit of everybody on the channel, especially minors and kids. They don't want to learn that and parents don't want to have their kids read that. I believe that my content is suitable for everybody and part of that is having a healthy discussion in the comment section. So if you want to troll me, you can troll me, but you have to keep the language clean. All right, finally, I want to talk about the usual suspects who end up in the health for review. It's usually people who don't like the particular animal I killed and ate. Everybody has their favorite animal. For some it's the lynx, some it's turtles, um, some it's the armadillo. You know, the porcupine, you get a lot of backlash on those weird kind of animals that nobody would even consider consuming. But thing is, if you go back in time, people weren't uh, selective about what they ate. If it was there, they ate it. And meat is meat. That's what I've learned to this channel. All meat is meat. All It's all edible. Uh, there might be certain animals that have glands that you might have to avoid, but the meat, the flesh part, it's all the same. It's all pretty much the same. There are different variations on taste and texture, but for the most part, meat is meat, man. You know, the chances of, of coming across a specific animal is pretty low, but the chances of coming across an animal, any animal, is quite large. And when we're out there surviving and eating just wild food, we're not picky. We can't afford to be picky. If it's there, we take it. And if uh, SHTF, you know, a big event, Armageddon kind of thing happens, you're not gonna be able to be selective either. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. If you guys enjoyed the vlog and you want me to do more, let me know. Um, it's a little bit of a different pace, but it was a bunch of things that I was piling up that I wanted to get off my mind. All right, guys. As you know, you can subscribe or not. I don't care. I do care about you. I just don't care if you subscribe. If this is something that you guys want to see, you can watch it. If not, it doesn't bother me. Hi.